Hi! Welcome to Size Me. I'm Donna, for those that don't know, and today we're going to go through the tutorial for the uh, VN blouse, which is the one that I have here. Hopefully, you can just about make out that really lovely frill down the front that really adds a lovely um, sort of subtle detail to this blouse. I wear it all the time. I love the length of the sleeves too. Uh, it doesn't make me feel too exposed. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. I have uh, presumed that you've cut out all your fabric. I presume that you've transferred all of the construction detailing onto those pieces of fabric. And I've also presumed you've set up your machine and your needle is the correct needle and we're good to sew. Okay, so just before we start, as usual, if you've seen these before, I'm just going to mention seam finishes. So there's lots of different ways that you can choose to uh, finish your seams. And uh, during this uh, tutorial, I won't be telling you what to do. We'll just be concentrating on the sewing. But what you will notice is that there's a magic overlocking fairy uh, that will overlock my seams in between uh, the steps. Uh, that's because this is generally the uh, garment that I'm making for the model to wear for the photo shoot. So I want to make sure it's uh, as hard wearing. What I don't like to do is presume that everybody has an overlocker. Uh, so in your instructions, you will see there is a list, like a, a hierarchy of the best way to finish seams. So if you take a look at that, Choose which way you want to do it and uh, you can do it in between the steps. Uh, whilst we mention instructions, I do want you to have them with you. I have mine here. Uh, the combination of the two really will help you to go through this. Um, there's lots of tips in there. I have them with me purely so that I go through them in the correct order. Because it's very confusing if I do something different uh, in this tutorial that's the, to than what I wrote in the instructions. Uh, so that's why I have, i honest, I know what I'm doing. That's why I have them there with me. Uh, so, if we're all good to go, the first thing that we're going to do is stay stitching. Now, that's important on a lightweight fabric. Uh, it prevents this neckline from opening and stretching whilst you're working. So, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to stay stitch the neck edge of the back and also the neck edge of the front, which is much bigger because we've got this pleat here. Now, we're not attaching anything to anything it's just one single layer of fabric and we're just simply going to stitch all the way around we're going to use the edge of our foot as a seam guide and um, just makes life uh, a little easier when you're stitching so I'll bring you round and you can see exactly how I do that okay right I'm trying a new camera angle this so that you can hopefully see the the plate better. So this is the edge of the foot and we've got the edge of the neckline here matching. And we're simply gonna stitch. So we're gonna do our back stitch as normal. And we have our machine set at a two and a half length of stitch, which is generally what you would ordinarily sew on. So you don't need to change anything. So there's no other layer, it's just one layer of fabric and we're just going around that neckline. We're going to do that with the front and back and then I'll meet you with both front and back uh, in a second. I'll let you do that. Okay, so we've finished those bits. So hopefully you can see there my stay stitching and it's just on the neck edge. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pin with the right sides together so the nice side of the fabric facing each other. I'm going to pin down the side seam. So that's from the underarm to the hem on both of these. Now, I'm going to bring the camera angle down slightly because I want you to see how I work when I'm using um, lightweight fabric because it's important that you know how to handle the lightweight fabric. So I'll just adjust the camera and you can have a look with me. That's better. So you have under here... The right side of the fabric is facing the ceiling. Doesn't matter whether this is the front or the back. Uh, as it happens, that's the, the back. And then I have the front here. This is the right side of the fabric and we're gonna place it down directly on top. So the right sides are together. And the trick when you're using this type of fabric is to mark all of the known points. So we know that the top has to match. Bear with me, and we know, oh, 
and we know that the bottom has to match because it has a tendency to move uh, that's why we love this fabric because it moves and it drapes so beautifully but it can cause us problems if you had any construction marks you don't here but if you did have any construction marks you would also match them and then it's about gently tapping and persuading the fabric into the position that you want it now you have to have faith in your own ability to cut out uh, I have faith, so hopefully you have faith in yourself. If you've cut it out correctly, it's the fabric that's changed shape, not that you've done anything wrong. And if that fabric has moved out of shape, you can negotiate and persuade it back into the correct shape. If you cut it because you think it's wrong, you'll have a really misshapen uh, piece that you try to attach and it will never look good. So uh, trust yourself, you're in charge, you make that fabric do exactly what you want to do. And once you've pinned it, we're going to stitch at our regular seam allowance, which is one and a half centimetres. We're going to do that down each side. I'll bring you around so you can see what I'm up to, just so that you can see that one and a half centimetres seam allowance. And then I'll leave you to do your seams. This here, uh, these here, sorry, are the numbers on the plate that correspond to a seam allowance. So I've lined the edge of the fabric with the one that says 15 for one and a half centimetres. And that's my aim all the way through this project, is to keep this edge of the fabric on the correct seam allowance. So we'll just go do our back stitch, and then we're constantly keeping it on that line. We're going to go all the way to the bottom and do our back stitch and then we're going to repeat on the other side and then I'll meet you at the ironing board and we're going to press these seams open. Right so you can see this seam here you can see that the overlocking fairy has finished off those edges um, so you'll have done whatever you've decided to do. I just thought I'd take a minute to explain what pressing the seams open means. So we're going to take our iron I've checked that it's not going to damage the fabric, so I've set the heat to the correct uh, temperature so that it doesn't uh, sizzle away at the fabric. And we're going to simply press in one direction. We're going to use steam. Steam is your best friend when it comes to pressing seams because it really sets them. Then we're going to press it in the other direction. And then we're going to open them out and press them down the middle. So that's the seam beautifully flat, beautifully pressed open. Now if I can just get this over the camera, like that. As a last step, I also just press it from the right side. It's just that added detail that really makes your project look so much better. So now that's all sorted, you're going to do that to the other side. And we're going to pop our body section to one side. And we're going to start work on our arms. So this is the top dart section uh, for your arm. So you should have transferred that line onto your uh, sleeve here. Hopefully, mm, you can't really see that. Let me, I'm just going to take the pins out. I'm going to hold that up because I've used uh, tracing paper and I've used red so that I can see it. I'm just not sure how much it comes across on the camera. So bear with me for one minute. And let me hold that up for you. So can you see that red line? Hopefully you can just about make it out and it'll come to a point and then it goes up the other side. That's what we're working on. I will keep coming and showing you what I'm doing, but that's the line I'm looking at. And the first thing we're going to do, I've got the right sides of the sleeve facing the ceiling. Put that in shot, there we go. So the marks are on the back here on this side, so I can't see the marks at the moment. Once I've got that in place, I'm going to fold over until I can see the mark. So the mark is here. I will come up closer. 
I'm going to put a pin right at the point. That's my first job to keep that point in place. And then I'm going to match those two red lines at the top. And I'm putting a pin along the red line and I'm checking that it's still on the red line at the back. And that's how I know I'm in the right location. One more pin just so that you can see where I'm at. OK, so if I come around this side of the camera. Hopefully you can just about make out the red line between the pins. So that's on the one side. If I turn it around, you can see that my pins are also down that red line. And that's how I know it's all pinned properly. So if you spend some time pinning and then I'll see you back at the sewing machine with both of your darts ready to stitch. I'm hoping that's a good enough angle for you. So I've got my needle at the top of the dart and I'm on the red line. And my trick is to stitch down that red line, taking the pins out as I go. So when I start off, I'm at a regular stitch length of two and a half. And I'm going to do that until I'm around about two centimetres or so away from the point of that dart. OK, so let's go for it. OK, so I'm around about two, three centimetres from the edge there. And I'm going to reduce my stitch length from two and a half down to one and a half. And I'm going to continue until I'm maybe around a centimetre to half a centimetre from that point there. Now, what's important is that we carry on this straight line. If we veered out a little bit and we're over here and we suddenly go, oh, no, we need to finish and we kind of stitch back so we don't keep a smooth line, we'll have a really weird detail here. So if you're a little bit early or a little bit late, it's better to just continue on the line until it hits than to make a really weird detail. But hopefully you've been really accurate and you're actually still on your line. So you should be. OK, so let's just go a bit further at the one and a half. And then I'm going to turn it down to one and I'm literally going to stitch off of the fabric. This stops us having to do a back stitch because a back stitch can create a really weird detail. OK, so I've stitched all the way off the fabric, lift my foot up and take that off there. So that's your first start done. I'm going to let you do the other one and then meet me at the ironing board and I'll show you how we deal with them from there. So this is the dart that you stitched here. And what I want you to do is to press it towards the back. So I've got the wrong sides of the fabric facing upwards. And I know which is the back because it should have two notches along the edge because that's set on the sleeve here. So this is the back where I set this up. And then we're just going to simply, with a little bit of steam, press that triangular dart towards the back. Now it gets a little bit tricky when you're right at the point. And the point is the most awkward part. Now I've pressed it to the back, I'm going to flip it over and I'm just going to work on the point detail. And we're just simply going to hold the fabric up whilst we get the iron right into that point. Now we're not stretching anything. We're not making it a perfect point. We're just gently pressing. So that imagine when that hangs on the shoulder, that dart just drapes over the edge. Okay. Once we're happy with the pressing, we can cut off the triangle of the dart. Let's get it in shot so you can see what I'm up to. So that's the triangle. We're going to cut it off, leave around about a half a centimetre. 
like so and then you're going to finish that edge now it is important that you do finish that edge because it's gonna it's on the shoulder so it's going to get quite a bit of um friction from wear so really do finish that even if it's just uh, a zigzag on there but you definitely need something i'm going to overlock mine uh, we're then going to be back at the sew machine i want you to have both your sleeves and we're going to pin down this edge here so this is the underarm so our dart is up here this is our opening for our sleeve and we're going to pin just that short bit there from the underarm to the hem on both of our sleeves and we're going to stitch it with our one and a half centimeter seam allowance you're going to press it like you did the side seams and once you've got both of those sleeves done i'll meet you back at the sewing machine for the next step so we're now at step six and we're going to concentrate on hemming the uh, sleeves of the blouse. So those of you with beady eyes will notice I now have a red thread in the machine and I've got green underneath. Basically a contrasting colour. It's a great way of using up all the odd uh, bits of thread that on the end of um, the bobbins that we seem to collect as sewers. Uh, we're going to simply stitch with the largest stitch length that we have around the hemline which is two centimeters so i've lined the edge of the sleeve hem up with the two centimeter mark i'm not going to do a back stitch at the beginning or the end i'm just simply going to stitch all the way around now this will become a guide that we're going to use at the ironing board to get a really lovely sleeve. It's a great tip for lightweight fabric and it's also great if you have a curved hem to do the same thing. So we're just going to stitch all the way around on both sleeves. I'm going to jump a step ahead whilst I've got the different colour thread in the machine and I'm also going to do exactly the same thing along the bottom of the bodice, so the hem of the blouse, all the way around at two centimetres and then I will see you at the ironing board. So hopefully you can see, here's the red line that we stitched earlier on the hem of the sleeve. We're going to turn all of that fabric over and press it right on that line of stitching. It's actually green on this side, if you can see it. I just used a different colour bobbin. And then we're going to turn it around and we're going to press again. And this is just creating a fold in the fabric at the correct place basically once you've got that lovely crease we can tuck in the raw edge and then fold it back and pop a pin there we go i'll do this here now it is a little bit time consuming but it really is worth doing it gives you such a lovely looking hem so once we've put the pins in we're just going to go over it again with the steam so that everything flattens out nicely once we've gone all the way around both sleeves you may want to do your hem at this point as well if not i'll i'll uh, sneak it in the video at the correct point if you like which is very close to the end but at least we've got our guide stitches there but once you've done this on the sleeves you can stitch close to this edge so it's not this edge it's the inside folded edge and um, I will show you but we're going to stitch close to that and it's going to look beautiful. So once you've done all your pinning I'll catch you back at the machine and I'll show you exactly where we want to be uh, stitching. Oh and uh, you'll want to put your, your uh, original colour thread back in the machine as well. Okay see you in a sec. Just like you guys to take a note of how many pins I have. When you're using lightweight fabric it has a mind of its own so pins really do help so I've not gone over the top for your benefit I've done it because I know that's going to work better so I'm back with my black thread my needle is in and it's right on the edge of this fold on this side of the fabric not this one it's on this side of the fabric my stitch length is now back to sorry this is stitching that's going to be visible. So our stitch length is at three and a half or one whole number above what you normally stitch with. It just looks nicer, that's all. And then we're just going to simply stitch around the edge. We're going to do our back stitch and we're going to stitch. I'm hoping my fingers are not in the way. 
so we're nice and close to that edge the reason we're close to that edge is that's the bit that we're trying to stop flipping over so if we stitched it sort of close to this edge you'd always get this bit unfolding as you whirl your garment it is quite common that people do do that so remember close to this edge we're going to go all the way around you're going to do that on your other seam and then i'll meet you back here and what i'd like you to have with you is your main bodice your two sleeves and lots of pins and we're going to actually insert the sleeve into your bodice so you're very close to having a finished garment guys see you in a moment Okay, so we've hemmed our sleeves. I just wanted to show you how to then take out the guide stitching, the basting that you did. So we're gonna take a hold of that green thread. We didn't do any back stitching, if you remember. So we should be able to just simply pull it out. Now, if you have to snap it, that's fine. The thread will snap before it damages your fabric. And we can pull it out all the way. Just one last bit. And then if you can see the red, which I can here, you should be able to pull that out too. So there is your lovely hem. Hopefully you can see how close I've stitched to that edge. The sun's come out, sorry, it's in my eyes now. Okay, so that's our hem completed. We're gonna work now on putting that raglan sleeve into our bodice. I want to try and show now how we insert the raglan sleeve into the bodice. So this is the bodice and we have the arm here. So this is the right side of the bodice that's, that's facing me. And that is the curve. That's the curve for the, uh, for the arm. Okay, so this is the right side. I'm going to then take the sleeve. That's the right. Hi, Johnny. Take the sleeve, and the sleeve is the right way round. And I'm going to take the underarm seam, and I'm going to pin it to the bodice underarm. So the right sides of the fabric are facing each other. And we're just going to pop a pin to match those two locations. Now, there is then a notch further up each of these curves and further up your arm. And I want you to check that you have the correct sleeve. Oh, and as luck would have it, I do. So this one has one notch and there's also a single notch up there. So I know if I match those points, they work. If it didn't match, if there was two and one notch, we would just simply take the other sleeve. We've just got the different, the wrong one. But as luck would have it, we've got the right sleeve. I'm going to make those notches match and pin them together. Like so. And then we're going to bring this around and match the double notch on this side. Like so. So we now have three points that match and we can then work from there. So if we pull this over, we've got the underarm and that first notch and we're going to pin so that that matches. Now this is another case of making it work. I don't want to see you presuming that you've marked the notches incorrectly or anything like that. I want you to make it work. You will have to do a little bit of easing under the arm and that's as expected because it's the tightest part of the curve and then we're going to pin it up to the top now as you get more pins in it does become more difficult because it's actually creating the shape and you're kind of working on the inside of the project but trust me this is much easier than inset sleeves but it can be a little bit tricky I will hold it up for you guys to see better once I put all the pins in. And I also just want to show you what happens at the top edges because geometry fights against us a little bit when we get to these points. Okay, so that's all of my pins. So this is the blouse 
inside out if you like so let's see if we can see that there on the screen so this is the underarm here and we've pinned all the way up to the top on both sides so that's the arm in there I wanted to just show you what happens at the top let's What you will likely have is an extra little triangle here on one half and it's just geometry but what you're looking to do is to match the edges of the fabric one and a half centimetres in from this edge because that's the important part. So if you have a little triangle at the top, don't worry about it, it's absolutely normal. So once we've got this in place, we're simply going to stitch around that curve that we've pinned at one and a half centimetre seam okay take it nice and steady because you may get things caught underneath so just take your time with this um but you should be okay and then do your other one and then we've got the really tricksy bit to do guys which is the neck binding so once you've done these two and press them beautifully we'll meet back here but if you could have uh, your neck binding with you that would be great see you in a bit so let's work on the trickiest uh, part of this particular project then guys. So you will see that this is the uh, neck binding and I've stitched it together to create one big circle. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just to press those seams open before we start. And then we're going to go around that circle and we're going to fold the wrong sides of the fabric together like that. And then we're just simply going to press. So we're creating a circle of fabric that's folded. We're being incredibly careful that we don't stretch this at the moment because it was cut on the bias. So it could easily be stretched out of shape. Uh, if you have fabric that really is moving all over, what you might want to do before you press is to pin down that edge to keep everything where it should be. We're going to go all the way around and then I will meet you at the sewing machine. So you need to have this neck binding with you as well as your project so far and lots of pins. Okay. So what I have here is our loop of uh, neck binding and I have our blouse and this is the neck opening. Um, the blouse is the right way round and then we have the neck binding and we're simply going to stitch it, uh, pin it. So where we had our seam, we're going to match that to the notch at the back, centre back of your blouse. I'm going to pop a pin and then I'm going to just show you that on a close-up. Okay, so that's the centre back and the seam match. But notice how all the raw edges, so there are two raw edges on the binding and there's a raw edge on the actual blouse. I've pinned them so they all match. We're going to actually continue that by matching them and pinning all the way around but the first step before we do that is we're going to make sure there is no twist in this neck binding and we're going to go right to the front of your blouse on the neckline there should be another notch that marks the center point and there is also a notch on your bias binding at that same point so just like we have with other things We've marked all, we've matched all the construction points so that the bit in between we've got left and we know we have to work with it. So I'm going to take my time and I'm going to gently bring the bias binding to the edge and pin. And we're going to do that all the way around. I'm going to nice and gently come around that curve on the shoulder detail. I'll just check that we're in camera doing this. Yep. And again, we're just, as we go, we're just matching 
all the details and we're trying not to stretch out the bias binding. It's cut on the bias to allow it to stretch. So if you do pull, it will stretch, but it will create a really horrid neckline on your project. So just watch out for that one. I'm going to let you persevere and pin this all the way around. And then I will see you at the sewing machine and we'll stitch it in place. OK, so that's the first half done. And we're going to do exactly the same on the other half. See you in a sec. So we're going to start at the centre back, so where the seam on this neck binding is. Um, I always, I, I'm in the habit of starting at the back or starting underarm, but, but that's where we're going to start. But notice, just like when we did the stay stitch in our very first step, I've got the edge of the foot matching the edge of the fabric. So that's how we're going to keep it all the way around. And we're just going to nice and gently stitch. We're at our normal stitch length, so we're at 2.5 on my machine. And we're going to just gently stitch all the way around. Now I'm going to keep with you until we get past one of the tricky bits, which is these curves. Okay, so we're coming to this curve. Can you see how I've let the fabric lie in the curve? If I do this, I get all of these pleats that are going to be stitched into the fabric. So I'm just pulling it round and I'm going to stitch around that curve as I go. Now it's a bit tricky. Just take your time. We're not in a race and we're certainly not working in a knicker factory, guys. So nice and steady pace. When I teach the kids, I always say, if you're going fast, you're going wrong. And uh, I do truly believe that when you're a novice. Yeah. To have control, you need to be steady. As you get more experienced, absolutely, you'll speed up. But you'll be really cross with yourself if you have to unpick all of this. So I'm going to let you go all the way around. And then I will uh, go through the next step with you. We're all stitched, our neck binding is attached. Um, the next bit is one of the most important parts to make sure that this neckline lays beautifully. And that's to take your, um, to clip your curve, sorry, where the, uh, on the neckline. And what that means is on any curve, so certainly all the way around the back of the neck and most of the front, we're gonna take out little triangles. And we're going to be brave. So we're taking out the triangles and we're cutting through the top and the two layers of binding. And we're going to keep these triangles approximately two centimetres to two and a half centimetres apart from each other. And what's incredibly important is how close you come to your stitching. So hopefully you can see there how close I've taken that down. Hi Johnny, Johnny's come to say hi. Mummy's working. So you're going to do that all the way around and then once you've done that you're going to clip a half of that seam allowance away. So let me show you what that means. So can you see there I've cut the middle one but the other two are still the correct length but you're going to chop them off. And you're going to do that all the way around this neck edge. Once you've done that, I'll join you at the ironing board and we'll go over the next step. So what I have here is the, you're looking at the inside of the blouse and this is the seam and this is the binding. So what we're going to be doing, I'm going to show you close up and then, we're going to, then you can do it on the iron, is you're going to press all of that seam upwards all the way around. And then you can pull over that binding and pop a pin in. Okay, so we're right on that crisp edge and then we're going to press it. So we're going to do that all the way around. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to press all of the seam allowance from the inside. Let me show you again. So all of this is going to be pressed up. So the bias binding is up there. You're going to press all of that seam up and then you can turn it over. 
and you can pin it. Now this edge is one of the curves, so hopefully you can see that we can actually create that curve before we put the pins in. I'm going to leave you to gently pin all of that and then I'll join you back and we're simply going to stitch a little bit like the sleeves. We're going to stitch close to this folded edge here. Okay, see you in a minute. So all the neck bind is nicely pressed over, got a really crisp edge here. And we're going to stitch, like we did on the hem, close to the fold that's close to this side. So not this side, this side. We're going to take it nice and steady. Oh, and before I start, we're going to have a stitch length of three and a half, because this is going to be visible all the way around the neck. And we're going to nice and gently stitch around. So all of those curves that you very carefully pinned, you're now going to very carefully stitch around, okay? So remember that you're stitching a curve. Don't be tempted to straighten everything up in front of you. Let it be a curve. Because some of these curves are quite tight, especially around this shoulder point that I'm approaching here. So just take your pins out at the last possible moment and come all the way around. So I'm going to leave you doing this and you're going to go all the way around. What you might then notice is that some of your original stay stitching is uh, peeking through on the right side. If that's the case, it's no, oh, it's no longer needed, so you can just unpick that. So when you've done all of that and your neckline is looking fantastic, we're going to move on to the next step, which is hemming the bottom of your blouse. So in the previous step, we already did our guide stitching in the red and green thread, if you remember. So we're going to go to the ironing board and you're going to, Use that as your guide to create your hem in exactly the same way as you did on your sleeves and you're going to stitch your hem. So what you'll then have is a beautiful looking blouse, but you're going to think it's a little bit too big for you. <laughs> OK, so when you're at that point and you're starting to panic, I'll join you back here at the sewing machine. And we have two more steps to do, guys. And then you can have your ta-da moment. Okay. We're here now. We've hemmed all of the bottom. Our sleeves are hemmed. We've bound our neckline beautifully here. And now we need to create the shape to it, which is this frill down the front of the top. Now, you should have had a line, a stitch line marked on your pattern here. Hopefully you can see that. And we're basically going to stitch from the top to the bottom. It's as simple as that. And we're going through both layers of fabric. So I have this, what you can see here is the correct side, the right side of the blouse, and this is the inside. So we folded it in half. If you've lost this line, what you want to do is to match the seams up here and make sure that curve and make sure everything in, is in half properly and then you can remark it if you need to but hopefully you read the instructions and you've marked this on the right side of your fabric rather than the wrong side of your fabric okay so we're going to stitch down here we're going to do a few backwards and forward stitches here because that's going to get quite a little bit of uh, of tension across the bust here and we're also going to do a few backwards and forward stitches here simply because that's the weak point if you like when you're moving around so i'll bring the machine forward you can watch me do that and our last and final step involves hand stitching so don't hate me too much uh, but we'll get this stitched and then we'll work on that we're starting right at the tip and we're going to go forwards and backwards a couple of times to make sure we're not going to encounter any problems whilst we're wearing it and then i'm simply going to stitch all the way down that line that we marked until we get to the other end this does create a really fem feminine touch to this blouse because it's quite boxy really but this little frill down the front, I think, is just beautiful. And then 
we're at the top, so we're going to go backwards and forwards again a few times just to make sure we don't encounter any problems. Right, hand needle and thread together, guys, and your hook and eye, and we'll get going. So let's work on the last bit, guys. I'm hoping this camera angle works for us. <clears throat> so hopefully down here you can see that white chalk line, which was the frill that we stitched. I want you to just go straight up to the neckline and put a pin there. You may want to lay it down, it might be easier. But once you've put a pin there, we can open up to the inside. We're going to make sure that they match. Mine don't because I mustn't have done it properly. We're going to make sure that they match across the top like that. And the first part that we're going to do is the hook. So we want the hook to be over the crease. Does that make sense? So not over here or over here, but right in line with where that pin is. And once we've got it in place, we can stitch. So we're just stitching it in place. Now, there may be a chance that you do see this, so do it as neatly as you can. But we're just going to go around each of those eyes a few times. Now, some people have been wearing this blouse uh, who did the test and they're not actually uh, connecting this bit. So it looks almost like a waterfall front uh, or a cowl neck. Maybe that's a better description, more like a cowl neck. Um, so you may want to consider that uh, if you really don't like putting these hook and eyes in. But if you do hand stitch these in, then you've got both options, haven't you? I do wear mine both ways, I'll be honest. It's nice to have a high neck sometimes, especially when the weather's a little bit chilly. So I'm just coming to the end. I think this angle is much better for you. <laughs> it's very strange doing it from the other side of the camera. <laughs> okay, so that's that side done. Just take it away so that I can uh, finish it. It's not my neatest stitching, guys. Please forgive me. I think I'll probably redo this away from the camera. And then the next important thing is the hook. Now, I made a note in the instructions <clears throat> that the hook part, this bit, wants to be facing the blouse like that so that you hook it like that. If it's the other way around, whilst you're wearing it, it does come undone. Uh, so that's a lesson learned for me. So the hook wants to be facing the eye, if that makes sense. So we're gonna hook it on so that we can get the position. <clears throat> and then we're going to take our needle and thread again and we're going to do exactly the same thing. Now I'm going to leave you to do this neater than uh, my attempt in front of the camera. When you've done that, I want you to give your blouse a good old press. Make it look beautiful and then I shall meet you back here for your tada moment. All right, guys. See you soon. So are you ready? Ta-da! <laughs> so I I love mine. Obviously I would. I designed it. I made it. But I really, really love how it falls. This is the one that we've made today, which looks beautiful. I love the way that that frill works on there. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed the pattern. Hopefully you love what your new blouse and you're going to flounce all over the place with it. I'd love some feedback. I'd love to know what you think about the pattern, what you think about these tutorials, the instructions. It really, really helps me when I'm working in isolation to know that if I'm doing it right, basically. Um, thank you for buying the pattern. Thank you for making it. Please share it all over social media. Or if you're not confident enough, just send, send it to me. I just like to see it. I just like to uh, see what you've achieved. All right, guys, see you in the next one. Bye.